And it's my pleasure to introduce Tesla co-founder and CEO, Mr. Elon Musk. Hey everyone, definitely a new approach. We got the, the Tesla drive-in movie theater, basically. Um, it's good to see everyone. It's a little hard to read the room uh, with, with everyone being in cars, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's the only way we could do it. So uh, hopefully it's cool and hopefully you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Okay, all right, great. And we, we now have uh, four vehicles in volume production, S3, XY. So, also the, the toughest joke, uh, I think, maybe ever. Um, it was a very difficult joke to make. Um, <laughs> uh, industry performance, you know, while the rest of industry is, has gone down, uh, Tesla has gone up. Um, and I think this speaks to, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, we also have safety at the core of our design. Uh, the, the Tesla cars are the safest cars uh, ever designed. We have the lowest probability of injury of any cars uh, ever tested by the US government, and that's just passive safety when you add uh, active safety into that, uh, it's even better. Like, I, I'm, I'm driving, I, I, as a matter of course, I've always done this, I drive the, the bleeding edge alpha build of autopilot. And so, so I sort of have insight into what is going on. Um, and previously, about a couple of years ago, we were, we were kind of stuck in a local maximum. I call this sort of getting trapped in a local maximum. Um, and so we had to do a fundamental rewrite of the entire autopilot software stack. We, we'll hopefully, release uh, a private beta of, of autopilot of the full self-driving version of autopilot in I think a month or so uh, and then people will, will really uh, understand just the magnitude of the change it's battery the battery stuff we're going to talk about is is truly revolutionary uh, and essential to uh, to Tesla's goal you know by how many years did we accelerate sustainable energy but what we're going to talk about with batteries and, and a few other things uh, will really explain how we're going to make a step change improvement in the acceleration of uh, sustainable energy. Hi, I'm Drew Baglino, SVP of Powertrain and Energy Engineering at Tesla, and I'm incredibly excited to talk about what we've been doing at batteries here at Tesla. Obviously, the, the, the issues we're facing are very serious uh, you know, with the climate change. Uh, this presentation is about accelerating the time to sustainable energy. Uh, goal number one is a terawatt hour scale battery production. So tera is the new giga. A terawatt is a, a thousand times more than a gigawatt. Uh, we used to talk in terms of gigawatts. Uh, in the future, we'll be talking in terms of uh, terawatt hours. So this is um, what's needed in order to transition the world to sustainability. Today's batteries can't scale fast enough. Uh, they're just too small. We would need 135 fully built out Nevada gigafactories to achieve 20 terawatt hours a year. It's not scalable enough of a solution. We need a dramatic rethink of the cell manufacturing system to, to scale as fast as we can. Yeah. To make the best cars in the world, we design vehicles and factories from the ground up. And now we do this for batteries as well. We have a plan to have the cost per kilowatt hour. And it's not a plan that rests on a single innovation, some research project that'll never see the light of day. It's a plan that has taken creative engineering and industrialization across every facet of what makes a cell into a battery pack from raw material to the finished thing. And we're gonna go through that plan with you today, step by step. So first, before we get too far into it, let's talk about what is in a battery cell. We've got the cap and the, and the can, negative and positive terminals of the cell. When you open that cell, you've got a tab connected to those terminals, what we call the jelly roll, which is the wound electrodes on the inside. Um, you can actually see what this looks like as you unwind it. This is over a meter long in a typical 2170 cell. Watch what happens as we, uh, there we go, discharge the cell. Got lithium moving from anode to cathode. And then the reverse, when we charge the cell, anode moving from, uh, lithium moving from cathode to anode across the separator. This is the basic of what makes all lithium ion batteries, whether they're, no matter what the form factor is. To date, at least in our products, we've moved from the 18650 form factor to the 2170 form factor through great collaboration with our partners. Actually, a slight note on, on why, why is the one called the 18650, although not on the slide, uh, versus the 2170, is that the, the first two digits refer to the diameter, 
and the second two digits refer to the length. So that, that helps explain why are these weird, what about, what's up with these weird numbers. Uh, we need to go beyond just um, what we're looking at us in front of us, how much we can reduce the cost and how much vehicle range increases as we change the outer diameter of the cell. We found a sweet spot somewhere around 46 meters, uh, millimeters. But it's not just about a bigger form factor. Like anybody could make a bigger form factor. Any fool, any fool could make a bigger form factor. Uh, there, <laughs> yeah, we not any fool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what we mean when we, when we talk about tabless. Um, we basically took the existing foils, laser patterned them, and enabled dozens of connections into the active material through this shingled spiral you can see. Yeah, this is important to appreciate. Like basically the, 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 the distance that that electron has to travel, you know, it's, it's just much less. So uh, you actually have a shorter path length in a large tabless, a large tabless cell than you have in the smaller cell with tabs. So this is a big deal. So even though the, the cell is bigger, it actually has uh, more power. Uh, the power to weight ratio is actually better than the smaller cell with, with, with tabs. This is quite, quite hard to do. It, so it's, a, you know, nobody's done it before. There's a whole bunch of things that we're, you know, keeping a little secret source here that we're not telling everything. Um, <laughs> people that really know cells, this is a massive breakthrough. For cylindricals to be able to, to get rid of the tabs dramatically simplifies winding and coating. Yeah. And has an awesome thermal and performance benefit. Put it all together and go to our new 80 millimeter length, 4680 we call this uh, new cell design. We get five times the energy with six times the power and enable 16% range increase, just form factor alone. Uh, yeah, so we're, 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 these, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. Plus the 16% or whatever the, the, the percentage range increases, these are the amounts due just to that particular innovation. This is not just a concept or a rendering. We are starting to ramp up manufacturing of these cells at our pilot 10 gigawatt hour production facility just around the corner. I mean, to be clear, it will take about a year to reach the 10 gigawatt hour capacity. And this is just a pilot plant. Uh, the, the, the actual production plants will be more on the order of, uh, you know, maybe 200 gigawatt hours, maybe more over time. So just the cell form factor change enables a 14% dollar per kilowatt hour reduction, just that cell form factor change. And now that you've been teased on this factory, let's talk a little bit about what's in a cell factory. First, there's an electrode process where the active materials are coated into films, onto foils, wound in the, in the winding process we just talked about, where if you do have tabs, you have to start and stop a lot. Then the, the jelly roll is assembled into the can sealed, uh, filled with electrolyte, and then sent to formation, where the cell is charged for the first time, and, and where the sort of the electrochemistry is set and the quality of the cell is verified. Wouldn't it be great if we could skip that solvent step, which is one of those dig a ditch and then fill it kind of things where you put the solvent in and then take it out and recycle it. You can see it here on a bench top. Literally, powder in, into film. As simple as that. I mean, it's hard, actually, uh, just to be clear. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, if, if this was easy, everyone would do it. So the, it's not like a uh, dry coating electrode is, is actually uh, easy. It's, it, it's, it's actually very hard to do what appears to be a simple thing. It's not like, you know, you, you make something work on your, on your bench and bingo, now you can make a bazillion of, of it. It's, Absolutely. It's insanely difficult to scale up. But if you do scale it up, yeah. what, what you saw before becomes this. Yeah. So you can see the motivation. A 10 times reduction in footprint, a 10 times reduction in energy, and a massive reduction in investment. Um, but as Elon was saying, simple is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basically, Tesla uh, is, is aiming to be the, the best at manufacturing of any company on Earth. Uh, this is the thing that's actually most important in the long run. You know, eventually, every company will have autonomy. I think, but not every company will be uh, great at, at manufacturing. Uh, Tesla will be absolutely head and shoulders above anyone else in manufacturing. That is our goal. Okay, now let's talk about formation. 86% reduction in formation investment, 75% reduction in footprint. It's also an additional 18% reduction in dollar per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we have a manufacturing system. We've got a cell design. What are the active materials we're going to put in that cell design? Let's talk about the anode first. 
Let's talk about silicon. Why is silicon awesome? It's awesome because it's the most abundant element in the Earth's crust after oxygen, which means it's everywhere, it's sand. The challenge with silicon is that it expands 4x when fully charged with lithium. And basically, all of that expansion stress on the particle, the particles start cracking. It also gums up with a passivation layer that has to keep reforming as the particles expand. Yeah, basically, with, with silicon, the cookie crumbles and gets gooey. <laughs> That's basically what happens. Good analogy. Yeah. What we're proposing is a step change in capability and a, and a step change in cost. And what that really is, is to just go to the raw metallurgical silicon itself. Don't engineer the base metal. If you, if you use simple silicon, it's dramatically less than even the silicon that is currently used in the batteries that are made today. Um, and you can use a lot more of it. The anode would cost, yeah, with this silicon, and the anode costs a dollar and 20 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and in the end, by leveraging this silicon to its potential, we can increase the range of our vehicles by an additional 20%, just this uh, improvement. Yeah, it gets cheaper and longer range. Yeah, and, and when we take that anode cost reduction, we're looking at another 5% dollar per kilo, kilowatt hour reduction at the battery pack level, and there's more. <laughs> Let's talk about cathodes. What is a battery cathode? Cathodes are like bookshelves. Bookshelf is probably a pretty good one, um, in the sense that um, you, you, need, you need a stable structure uh, to contain the ions. Um, so you want a structure that does not uh, crumble or get gooey or basically that, that holds its shape in both the cathode and the anode. Uh, as you're moving these ions, ions back and forth, uh, you, you, it needs to retain its structure. Uh, so uh, if it doesn't retain its structure, then you lose cycle life and your battery capacity drops very quickly. And that's what we have on the chart here. And you can see nickel is the cheapest and the highest energy density, and that's why Increasing nickel is a goal of ours and really everybody's in the energy and in, in the uh, battery industry And that's what we've been working on with our high nickel co cathode development, which has zero cobalt in it uh, We can get a 15% reduction in cathode dollar per kilowatt hour. Yeah um, So in, in order to scale, uh, we really need to make sure that we're not constrained by total nickel availability So starting with iron that's kind of like a medium range and then nickel manganese as sort of a medium plus uh, intermediate, um, and then a high nickel for long-range applications like Cybertruck and uh, the semi. Um, something like a, like a semi-truck, it's extremely important to have a uh, high energy density uh, in order to get long-range. And, and then when you're making the cathode, you have to take this intermediate thing called metal sulfate, add chemicals, add a whole bunch of water, a whole bunch of stuff happens in the middle, and at the end, you get that little bit of cathode and a whole bunch of wastewater and byproducts. Uh, and so we've, we've looked at the entire value chain and said, how can we make this as simple as possible? And that's what we're proposing here with our process. As you can see, a whole, less, a whole lot less is going on here. We get rid of the intermediate, metal water, final pro product cathode, recirculate the water, no wastewater at all. And when you summarize all of that, it's to 66% reduction in CapEx investment, a 76 reduction in process cost, and zero wastewater. Much more scalable solution. Yeah. So this process enables both simpler mining and simpler recycling. We should obviously on-site lithium conversion as well, which is what we will do using a new process that we're going to pioneer. That's a sulfate-free process again, skip the intermediate. 33% um, reduction in lithium cost, 100% electric facility co-located with the cathode plant. So uh, lithium is not like oil. There's a, a massive amount of it pretty much everywhere. Um, so, uh, in fact, there's, there's enough um, lithium in the United States to convert the entire United States fleet to electric. Every vehicle in the United States can be converted to electric using only lithium that is available in the United States. We actually got uh, rights to a, a lithium clay deposit in Nevada. Over um, 10,000 acres. Over 10,000 acres. Um, and then the, the nature of the mining is actually, I think, also very environmentally uh, sensitive in that we, we, we sort of take a chunk of dirt out of the ground or remove the lithium and then put the chunk of dirt back where it was. So it will look pretty much the same as before. Uh, and it will not look like terrible and yeah, it will be nice. Simply mix clay with salt, put it in water, salt comes out with the lithium, done. I yeah, mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> as we said at the beginning, when we get to this steady state 20 terawatt hours per year of production, we will tr transfer the entire non-renewable fleet of both power plants, home heating and, 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 batter and, and industry heating, and, and vehicles to electric. And at that point, we have an awesome resource in those batteries to recycle to make new batteries. So we don't need to do any more mining at that point. And you can see why. 
yeah. r the, the, the difference in the, the value of the, of the material coming back from the vehicle versus the ground, you'd always go to the vehicle. And we recycle 100% of our vehicle batteries today. And actually, we are starting our pilot full-scale recycling production uh, at Gigafactory Reno next quarter to, to continue to develop this process as, as our recycling returns. I mean, to date it's been done by third parties, but uh, we think we can, we can recycle the, the batteries more effectively, uh, whereas like third-party recyclers have to consider batteries of all kinds. All of the benefits that you just saw are added to this benefit of a 12% reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level. Almost at our have the cost goal, but there's one more section. Take it away, Elon. So it's, it starts with uh, having a single piece casting or a single piece casting for the front body and the rear body. Um, and uh, in order to do this, we uh, commissioned the, the largest casting machine that has ever been made. And it's currently working just uh, over the road at our uh, Fremont plant. Uh, we have the, the, the it's pretty sweet. Um, ma making the uh, entire, currently making the entire uh, rear section of the car in a, as a single piece, high pressure die cast aluminum. Um, and in order to do this, we actually uh, had to develop our own alloy uh, because we wanted a high strength casting alloy that not, did not require coatings or heat treatment. Uh, this is a big deal for, for castings. Um, so in order to achieve this, there's, there was no alloy that existed that could do this. So we developed our own alloy, a special alloy of aluminum that has high strength without heat treat and, and is very castable. Where the battery for the first time will have dual use. Uh, the battery will both have the use as an energy device and as structure. So uh, all modern airplanes, the fuel tank, your, your wing is just a, a, a fuel tank in wing shape. This is absolutely the way to do it. Um, and then the, the, the fuel tank serves as dual structure. Um, and it's, not, it's no longer cargo. It's, it's fundamental to the structure of the aircraft. Um, we're doing the same for cars. It also allows us to pack the cells more densely because we do not have uh, intermediate structure in the battery pack. So instead of having these like uh, supports and stabilizers and stringers and structural elements in the battery, we now have a lot more space in the battery because the pack itself is structural. So it effectively glues the cells to the top and bottom sheet. And this allows you to do shear transfer between the upper and lower sheet. It's really cool. This is really major. Um, like I said, it's, it's, so 10% mass reduction in, in the body of the car. 14% range increase, uh, 370 fewer parts. And in addition to the improvements we just said on enabling additional range and improving the structural performance of the vehicle, it is worth another 7% dollar per kilowatt hour reduction at the battery pack level, bringing our total reductions now to 56% dollars per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Range increase, we're unlocking up to 54% increase in range for our vehicles and energy density for our energy products. 56% uh, reduction in dollars per kilowatt hour at the battery pack level, and a 69% reduction in investment per gigawatt hour, which is the true enabler when we talk back about how do we achieve this scale problem here. Yeah. To be clear, it will take us probably a year to 18 months to start realizing these, uh, these advantages, and probably to fully realize the advantages, probably it's about three years or thereabouts. I mean, long term, we, you know, we want to try to uh, replace about uh, at least 1% of the total vehicle fleet on Earth, which is about 2 billion vehicles. So long term, we want to try to make about 20 million vehicles a year. Uh, what, does it mean for, what, does this, what does this mean for our future products? Uh, so uh, we, you know, we're, we're confident that long term, we can design and, and manufacture a, a, a compelling $25,000 electric vehicle. Um, so. But it really, it was always our goal to try to make an affordable electric car. And um, I think probably, uh, yeah, like I said, about, about three years from now, uh, we're confident we can make a very, com uh, uh, very compelling $25,000 electric vehicle uh, that's also fully autonomous. 